Hidden symbols, walk-ins, life beyond life, meditation, grid lines, and seeing with your third eye. These are just some of the topics covered on this episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. I'm your host, Skull Babylon, and thank you for being part of another community collaborative episode to assist in the evolution of consciousness. We are mirrors upon other mirrors, and so long as we keep being, we will always have something to talk and learn about as we reflect into infinity. Check out more about the global Paradigm Shift community at ParadigmShiftCentral.com and share the PSR Facebook page with your friends at Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio. Thank you for being who you are, and thank you for being part of something awesome. Enjoy the show. Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to everyone out there in the internet land. This is your co-host, Skull Babylon, and you're tuned in for another exciting, educational, and inspirational episode of Paradigm Shift Radio, the official online radio show that the Illuminati does not want you listening to, because there's just too much good content, too much community collaboration coming out of this that just has too much potential to change the world, so they're they're trying to shut us down. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. We're, we're, we're out here, we're doing our own things, and things are quite easygoing and always productive and always unfolding, spiraling out into infinity and so forth and so on. So, of course, just a big shout out to everybody who is in the live chat. And as per usual, just feel free to get the word out about the show. Just share it on Facebook if you have not yet. Share it on your social networks and so forth and so on. And uh, just invite your friends because the more people who we have involved with this episode, the more people who we have adding to the collective inspirational momentum that is not only this radio show, but also the global network of paradigm shift communities and potentially with each new person who listens to the show they might be inspired to help birth a new reality and help get things rolling within their community by starting up a paradigm shift community in their area so obviously just a big shout out to everybody who is in the live chat we got about 32 people as it is right now and that number will continue to grow as the show develops and then you guys continue to get the word out there but just for those of you who may be new to the show paradigm shift radio is a branch of paradigm shift paradigm shift global community and you can go to paradigmshiftcentral.com for more information about that and uh just confirm for me guys uh is my microphone sounding okay i know we had some technical issues in the past but i'm getting some i'm getting confirmation that you guys are hearing what i'm saying sounds like things are okay and hopefully there shouldn't be any glitchiness this episode and uh yeah so paradigmshiftcentral.com is a global hub for an entire network of paradigm shift communities and these paradigm shift communities are encouraging open-mindedness healthy living and the evolution of consciousness i myself am brendan aka skull babylon and i'm affiliated with paradigm shift london ontario canada and that's the uh ground zero of this paradigm shift thing like i'm the one who started it up with a few of my buddies and uh this is like sort of a life time thing that we're doing here like this is a hobby but it's also something that has no uh, end date in sight you, you know sort of like nature itself it's just sort of infinite so to speak so uh yeah if you want to get involved with a paradigm shift community in your area whether there actually is one or whether you're thinking about starting one go to paradigmshiftcentral.com and first of all i would suggest checking the map there's a map right on the front page and just see if there's a paradigm shift community near your location because there might already be one and if there is one then feel free to get in touch with their Facebook page. Feel free to send them a message, say like, hey, when's your next meeting or how can I get involved? Maybe they already have the information up there and check it out because along with the Paradigm Shift communities being digital communities, they're also about the physical interaction. So we want people to be able to practice having conversation about the things that they don't usually get a chance to talk about in normal public spheres of conversation simply for the purpose of being able to act as mirrors for one another and being able to collectively raise each other up. I mean, Truth be told, if one person is stuck by themselves, you know, whether they choose to be or whether it's just like a circumstance, they're probably only going to get so far. And that's where the more people who are involved with it, they're going to be able to help pull each other up. They're going to be able to reach back and lend that helping hand and help everyone sort of collectively grow by sharing their experiences, sharing their their practical information, what works for them, and, and helping just piece together the puzzle. And that's something that we commonly say, but that is sort of the recap of what this is all about. So again, check out if there's a paradigm shift community in your location already and uh feel free to get involved with that and if you're thinking about starting up a new one there's links all on the main website that will tell you how to get involved and how to get started with that and we want people to be able to be inspired by the fact that there's a global momentum behind this already because you know they might think that like hey i want to be able to get more people out together in my community but i sort of feel like i'm off doing my own thing well in this case like you're not you're actually part of global momentum so if you've been thinking about it 
it's a really exciting thing because synchronicity is that aspect that will help bring us all together. And when I helped start start this in my uh, in my club, like in as as a club in my college back in the day, it was basically under the premise that if you build it, they will come. Like I understood how synchronicity worked at that point, and the idea that the universe sort of has this natural ability to sort of bring things together. So the paradigm shift communities act as beacons, I guess you could say. So the people who are attracted to them will be the people who show up at them. And your job as the facilitator is to just put the beacon out there, make it visible for the people to see, and do your best to creatively get the word out there into your community. So, of course, a huge shout out to everybody who has been doing an excellent job with that within their own communities. I know I don't hear a lot about what is going on, but I know that like quite a few of the communities are having regular meetings, and just congrats to all of you guys out there who are actively involved. And, and tonight on the radio show, I would love to be able to hear from some people who are actively involved with their Paradigm Shift communities to get some feedback, to hear how things have been happening in their location. And obviously tonight on the episode, we don't have any particular guests lined up. If you might be new to the show, we do have guests on the show every now and then. But we also keep the show open as a platform for us, the community, to be able to just make whatever we want with it. We don't necessarily have to have a a strategic or specific plan set ahead of time. We just sort of like create it as just like this environment where we can just let things go where they need to and let the ideas roll. So I'm not really going to spend too much time doing community news, but I will just give a couple shows shoutouts to uh, those shoutouts that are required and those go to the shoutouts of the pages that did help share the the uh, link to the show this week so the first shout out is a page called cosmic consciousness and i'm just going to post a link in the live chat right there so for everybody listening to the show please like their page get them a few more likes get them adding to the, get them more people interacting with their page and uh, the facebook page for those of you listening is facebook.com slash cosmicness so c o s m i I C N E S S. And the next page is one that actually shared the page, shared the link last week, and that is the Rainbow Warrior community. And I'm going to post a link for that in the live chat as well. So again, check out their page and like that also. So that one, if you type in Rainbow Warrior community into Facebook, it will show up, but the address itself is a little bit long and a little bit complicated. The next one is Truth Seekers and Spiritual Warriors. And again, the link for that is a little bit uh, unusual, but I will be posting the link into the live chat. And again, like that page and check out their stuff. I've been actually interacting with that page going back quite a few years they're one of the first few pages that was really ahead of the time in in terms of in terms of before all these pages start emerging like when i started this paradigm shift thing like paradigm shift the page there was only like uh, i could only find maybe like 30 ish pages at that that were sort of doing what the paradigm shift page was doing and now there's like hundreds and hundreds of pages doing that and you can check out plenty more of the pages at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash pages and that's the page that's a website a subdirectory of the main website that you can go to to find a whole bunch of community pages that are worth liking so go to that page and check those out and uh, also I'll mention that just since we're on the top of the show check out paradigm shift paradigm shift central.com slash metavision m-e-t-a-v-i-s-i-o-n and uh, that is a page where you'll find a whole selection of youtubers and people who are sharing their voice and getting consciousness out into the world in specific those of those who don't necessarily have a whole bunch of subscribers yet so go to that page on the paradigm shift central website and i'll post a link for that in the live chat as well so you can actually browse that while you're listening to the show though you may not necessarily be able to listen to it yet but check out the links to the people's web pages on there and subscribe to them as well because paradigm shift central is a platform for you guys to be able to get your voices out and last episode we actually did have uh, i guess you can say like a highlighted youtuber on the episode and that's something i'd actually be like to be able to continue so in the past we've had uh, traditionally like i'll always put uh, my subscribe to my youtube which for those of you who haven't checked it out please subscribe to that as well and that's youtube.com slash skull babylon and i'll post a link for that in the live chat as well so check out that because i do have videos going up fairly regularly plus some more videos going up in the near future which i'll talk about in a second but the link that we had for the uh, for the website, for the YouTuber last week was Roscoe, and Roscoe was on the air, and he was talking about, uh, he was asking me about aliens. We were talking about Salvia last episode. So Roscoe, I know you're in the live chat. Post your link for your YouTube into the live chat, and I'd like to, like I said, I'd like to be able to have another YouTuber featured in this episode once it goes up on YouTube. 
So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to maybe call into the show. And there may actually be someone in particular who may be calling into the show tonight. So we'll get that sorted out by the end. And if there's someone in particular who calls into the show who has their own channel, who wants it to be promoted, then feel free to let me know and we'll include it as a featured YouTuber for that episode once it goes up on on the YouTube and uh, just to clarify, for those of you who might be new to the show, every episode that we do here, you can listen to it again through the link that you're listening to on Blog Talk right now if you're listening to it live. But you can also listen to it through YouTube. And that's something that I encourage you, even if you have already listened to it through Blog Talk, through, through Blog Talk, go to the YouTube, which you can find through the main Facebook page, facebook.com slash paradigmshiftradio or paradigmshiftcentral.com slash PSR, and check out the uh, links there because those links on YouTube are just going to be able to help it spread to a wider audience plus they're more convenient because they have all the show notes embedded into them already so feel free to share the youtube link in fact don't like i I know i say feel free but like i'm i'm encouraging you because that will help us reach out to more people like there's certain protocol uh there's certain patterns that we as a global community need to start getting more in the habit of in order to make the most out of this networking branching experience like in order to help our branches in order to help our tendrils reach out further and, and also a big part of that, and I'll just mention this, this, this message is almost specifically for any of the admins for the Paradigm Shift communities. Make a habit of posting the Paradigm Shift radio live links plus the YouTubes when the episodes are going up, when the information is up there. Because I don't have access to all the pages. I have access to Paradigm Shift Central and Paradigm Shift Radio, Paradigm Shift London, and a couple others. So I request that the admins, if you're an admin of a Paradigm Shift community page, to please share any of the primary links posted up to Paradigm Shift Central relating to Paradigm Shift Radio or anything else through your pages as well. So just a couple side notes there, because the more we do that, the more we're going to make sure that people are constantly in the know, basically. We just don't want to leave anyone out. So we just got to make sure that all our, uh, you know, all our T's are crossed and our dies are audited, and that's going to help us evolve more efficiently into the future. So... That's with that, and I will just mention this off the top of the show since it's something that I'm immediately working on. Just give me one sec. I'm just getting a drink. But basically for uh, what I've been working on today, like I woke up at uh, like first thing in the morning and I've been working on it the entire day. So I mean at least like over like 10, 12 hours, give or take. And I'm working on the promo video for a documentary, which I am going to be putting together with the help of you guys. And that's something that I did mention last week on the show. And that is a documentary called Journey to Lucidity. And it's going to be about me going to California for the Lucidity Festival 2013. And I'm posting a link for that in the live chat right now. And the link's paradigmshiftcentral.com slash JTL, as in Journey to Lucidity. And basically, the promo video I'll have up for that in the next couple of days. But the funding, the, camp- the funding campaign for it is already up. So basically, it's going to be a film... I mean, you'll see it in the promo video, but it's going to be something really different from what I've done before. It's going to be uh, educating and about the dream exploration topics. It's going to be bringing in a whole bunch of topics, and it's going to be taking the audience through the experience of the Lucidity Festival in a very visceral way, uh, very, very just like very dreamlike in a sense. And it's going to be really just like super creative and just super like unique in a lot of ways. I mean, for those of you who've seen Waking Life, you can compare it to that, but it's going to be a unique thing in its own in the sense that it's going to be kind of like a, it, it will be a documentary but it'll also have like a narrative to it and it'll also have a whole bunch of like visual graphics to it so again i'm asking on the show now but you'll see the links uh i'll include it into the youtube after the show is up once the promo video is done but i'm requesting that you guys donate to that now because the initial funds the preliminary funds will help me get out to california to see that this dream uh does come into reality and uh there is like the very you know one way of i of that I look at it is the fact that like in an in an infinite parallel reality, like this project has already been completed, so all we have to do is align ourselves with it, but in order to align ourselves with it, I'm requesting that we work together as a team to be able to do that so if you donate eleven dollars that's going to give you early access to the film once it's online and it will be released online and will also go out into film festivals and so forth and uh yeah, like that's something I'm really excited to do. And for those of you who may not be familiar with my work, you can go to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash JTR, which stands for Journey to Rockmont. And you can find the previous full-length documentary that I did there about another document, about another festival that I went to in 2012. So this will be technically my fourth full-length documentary film that I will be creating. 
And uh, yeah, like I, with each one, I try to change it up a bit. And and then I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you guys as well. And check out more about the Lucidity Festival at www.lucidityfestival.com. Like it is a very cool festival and I'm really looking forward to making sure that I get out there with your guys' help and the, the festival is just going to be a lot of like art and music and consciousness and very dreamlike in a lot of ways. So lucidityfestival.com as well as facebook.com slash lucidityfestival. So check out those pages. I'm posting them, them in the live chat right now. So if anybody who's in the live chat, all 43 of you in the live chat right now, go to facebook.com slash lucidityfestival and just like that page and keep an eye on their page and you'll see more about the festival and uh, theoretically and most likely you'll see some information about the film that I'll be working on as well. And like I said, I look really forward, I really look forward to sharing that with you. And for those of you who may be interested, consider yourself fortunate that you're listening to this episode because there is a special promo code that I'm going to share with you that will give you a discount on the uh, access to the price for the tickets. So if you plan on actually going to the festival, if you're thinking about it, and again, it's in Santa Barbara, uh, obviously if you plan on going to it, let me know. So you can add me on Facebook at facebook.com slash SkullBabylon and let me know and then maybe we can even put you in the documentary. But use the promo code CHERISH. So I just typed that into the live chat. So C-H-E-R-I-S-H, CHERISH. Use that as a promo code and you will get a discount on your priced ticket for the festival. So that's in early April. So, I mean, it's coming up fast, which also means that the funding campaign is going to be happening very fast. So just keep an eye open for that. And, uh, yeah, just do what you can It is really all I ask. And uh, obviously, like, in addition to those donations, feel free to donate to the Paradigm Shift Central Fund in general to help us continue to do episodes of Paradigm Shift Radio. It costs us about $70 a month to be able to keep the website up and to be able to keep the radio show going. That's just through regular hosting costs. So if you have listened to the show for a while, please donate maybe even just $5 at ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash donate. And that is greatly, greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, because I mean, for the money that we don't necessarily have, like it's basically coming out of my own pockets. And uh, I mean, I'm not complaining, but truth of the matter is like I've been doing this for a while and like I've actually invested quite a bit into this paradigm shift thing that we're doing here. But I mean, you know, like this is just fact of the matter is because like if we don't necessarily have the funds there as a community, then that's where the funds are coming from. So I mean, to be able to help me invest my energy into other projects, it helps when you guys invest your energy into the global community. And uh, it goes full circle and it's all a toroidal field. So that's basically all your news in terms for community news as of today. And uh, like I said, for this episode, I'd like to be able to get into some callers fairly soon. And uh, we do already have some people who are into the uh, call-in right now. So we will be bringing them on in a couple minutes. But for those of you who may not be familiar just uh this format for the show is really an opportunity for you to bring any sort of questions ideas experiences that you want to share with a global community this is a platform for you to share your information with the community and uh just be able to get your voice out there and to just consider it as practice so there's a few things that i would like to bring up at some point in the episode relating to some very relevant and interesting topics that we had last night in our paradigm shift london community meeting uh we have our meetings every friday up in a yoga studio Studio. And uh, I just felt that last night's meeting just went really well. There was about 16 of us, and uh, there was just some really, really key things that came up. And uh, hopefully, I'll be able to uh, bring some of those topics up in the show. So keep that in mind. And uh, thank you again for everybody who's t- tuned in. And uh, still feel free to get the word out there as we get rolling into the meat of the show. And also, for those of you who were listening to the show last time, you'll remember at the end of the episode, we actually had a caller call in. Uh, Ramadasa, and uh, she was talking about how she was a walk-in. And uh, that, y- if uh, you're not familiar with that, we'll probably explain it again once. Uh, once, because what I'm trying to say is she's going to call into the show again uh, later today at, at around 11:45 ish Eastern Standard Time. So in about 25 minutes, give or take. So if you have any questions in particular for a person who is a walk-in then feel free to post those comments into or send me a private message in the live chat as well. So um, make sure that you do that. And also, I will mention this just because uh, it needs I just can't not mention it. And he did ask me politely to do so in terms of community pages, uh, one that I just accidentally overlooked. Facebook.com slash free or yeah, so sorry, Facebook. Okay, the page is called 
free your mind. The Facebook address is facebook.com slash revive your, your, is it? Yeah, revive your mind. So yeah, facebook.com slash revive your mind. And the page is called free your mind. But uh, that page is actually uh, run by Ross, who was on the show last week and who I alluded to at the beginning of the episode. So, or sorry, it's called open your eyes. I apologize, Ross. <laughs> so he's yelling at me in the live chat. So facebook.com slash revive your mind. And the page is called open your eyes. And uh, again, for everybody who's in the live chat, please like Ross's page and just check out because every page sort of has like their own unique sort of angle and, and, and are always sharing interesting stuff. So, all right, now, let me just make sure. Yeah, I think everything is in order. So, uh, yeah, okay, cool. We'll uh, move into the first caller from there. And, uh, again, guys, feel free to check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com and maybe browse it while you're listening to this episode. Oh, and uh, share the Harlem Shift video if you haven't yet. So uh, that's still uh, floating around like 2,300 views, give or take, which, I mean, it isn't a heck of a whole lot, but, I mean, in terms of community-conscious stuff, like, it's a decent number, 2,000 people, still a lot of people, but uh, let's try and get it up there, but uh, I think the Harlem Shake thing is kind of, <laughs> that's kind of coming and going and stuff, but still, feel free to get that video out there. It's on the main ParadigmShiftCentral.com website, so that's all the news for today, and thank you, everyone, for listening, and with that said, we will bring on the first caller. So, caller from area code... Okay, I'm actually going to bring a caller on. I don't know what area code on. I'm pretty sure they're calling in from Skype, and they're number shows up as 111 on my thing, but uh, that's a glitch in the uh, blog talk matrix. But anyway, so caller who's calling in on Skype, I can't give you a total warning, but we're going to bring you on anyways, and we're going to go from there. So caller who's on Skype, get ready to come on to Paradigm Shift Radio, and we'll go from there. Here we go. Hello, caller. Oh. Can you- Damn it. <laughs> oh, is this, is this Jeff again? Okay. I, I guess so. I didn't know that this was a Skype number. Hello, how are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, uh, sorry, Jess, do you have someone else there with you? Yeah. Yes, my name's Anthony. I'm, I'm here with my with my good friend, Jess. Okay, uh, cool. Can you hear cool. me good? Yeah, we we can hear you. Okay, that's 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 good. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I was gonna say, Jess, uh, this is Jess from Paradigm Shift Connecticut. For those of you who might not be familiar, and she actually called into the show last time, and I knew she was gonna call in. I was like, Jess, like wait until a little bit later because I want to get some new callers on the air. But we haven't had Anthony on the air before, so this this is fine. This is an okay setup. So Anthony, welcome to Paradigm Shift Radio. What would you like to bring to the show? I just wanted to talk about a couple quick things that I wrote down listening to the show earlier. So. I just want to get a minute to say my bit, and I'll be done. Uh, yeah. I'm very happy to be here. I just want to say that I want to touch upon a couple quick things. Uh, as you all know, there's a lot happening out there in the world. Uh, there's a lot of good things happening, and there's a lot of bad things happening. I firmly believe, though, we are going to make it through all this and continue to learn, grow, and evolve. We are all in it together on this journey, and I have absolute faith in the power of people putting their hearts and minds together. So let's put ours together and continue to work for the greater good and make the future bright. Uh, Change generally doesn't happen overnight, except in the movies. Good things take time, and things that are worth doing aren't easy. But you can't let this discourage you. Change is definitely within our reach, and we are going to continue to work toward it. And I really believe that what's happening here is a a beautiful thing. It's great seeing people come in together and work toward a, a, a cause that is good for all of us. Um, and that's about as far as I got into my notes. You caught me about halfway through, so I'll, I'll say a couple of things like off the top of my mind. Go for it. Uh, I'm, I'm just briefly familiar with what you guys are doing. Jess has definitely showed me some stuff, and every single thing that I've seen I've liked. Uh, I think it's a really great thing, and I'm going to continue working with her toward making a website for our side of some of the stuff and uh, and trying to get as many people as I know in on what's going on, because they should be. discussion uh, we're thinking about having some gatherings of different people in the area that we, we don't have information on it quite yet, exactly when and where. But we want, we want to get people together just to have, you know, a good time, meet people, have some open conversations, and, and have some, you know, real honest talk about what's really going on. For sure, and, man. And that's about it. Cool, man. Um, Sweet. I'm I'm going to, I'm just, just going to say, Jeff, I'm posting the Paradigm Shift Connecticut page into the live chat. So for anybody in the live chat, check out that page. And, and uh, whether you're in Connecticut or not, feel free to uh, like it as well. So, but Jeff, go ahead. You're about to say something. Um, okay. Uh, 
No, I didn't really get into much of, like, my family or anything, but, like, there's just, like, a lot of weird things that, well, I wouldn't really consider them weird, because, like, what else would they be? But, um, like, my mom, her name is Jean, and, uh, her dad was a head accountant for General Electric for 20 years, lost all of his money to, like, stocks that his, like, quote-unquote business friends, like, told him to put money into, which, you know, could have good been a good thing or a bad thing, but, like, Jean, like, think of her name as, like, Jean's, like, as Jean's, like, I knew her name as being Jean before I knew what Jean's were. And then, like, my de- my father, Don, has, like, a crazy history of uh, Freemasonry blood all the way, way before it was even called Freemasonry. Like, they brought, like, the first uh, car into Shelton is, like, the town that I grew up in. Like, my family used to be, like, in, like, high sort of powers. But, like, something really weird and something really dark really happened. Like, the children all started dying and, like, nobody was able to reproduce. And, like, the only person who was able to reproduce out of, like, my dad and his two two brothers was him. That's when... Uh, his father had to like take off because he was quote unquote being chased by the mafia. They found him dead in uh, 1980 uh, with a methadone overdose at the age of 34, which you know like the degrees of Freemasonry. There's the 33rd and then like 34th is like where you become like a Shriner or whatever. And uh, they found him like dead in an apartment in 1980 after being missing for like 15 years or something by a lady named Sandy Smith. Um, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was buried somewhere around there. I don't really know exactly where. Um, my brother's name is Jeremy. Uh, he was always very disgusting and, like, reminded me of germs, but, like, I knew his name is Jeremy before I knew about germs, obviously, because I was, like, two at the time. Um, my birthday is July 1st, and I was born, uh, in Griffin Hospital. It's really interesting to take into consideration considering how Harry Potter was born on July 31st. Um, my teachers in elementary school first was green, you know, like green, like the heart chakra, like for kindergarten. And then Feely who taught me about like butterflies and shadows. And then Frank, who taught me to be like very frank and open about things. And that would be like the best way to get my point across. And then I had Lily. Lily halfway through my uh, third grade year, like left to go have a child. So she had a replacement, so it was like a replacement teacher. This is when my life started to get really dark. There was a mercury spill that happened in my house. I was always very, very good at math, like my grandfather was, but I never had to write down any formulas or any equations. And that's when I started, like, thinking that the government doesn't care about you and only wants, like, your money. And, like, my dad started getting, like, a little weird at times because, like, he was also having a lot of issues with his own radio show that was on WPLR at the time. That ended yeah, up you getting mentioned canceled. that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, sorry, and, Jeff... Uh, can I, can I just slow you down for just a second? Like, I mean, like all the yeah. stuff that you're, <laughs> all the stuff that you're talking about. Like, um, I'm, I, I'm just not really sure if the audience themselves would really be able to understand the context of what you're talking about. But I mean, like, I, I think I understand where you're coming from. Are you sort of talking about like in the recent few, in the recent, you know, in the over the last couple of days, you've been looking back at your own life and sort of been recognizing patterns from your past that have sort of been almost like synchronistic representations of something that you might not have recognized at the time but actually had more meaning than you realize that helped sort of create your future exactly. yes exactly. Okay. exactly okay all right okay so just exactly. yeah keep going but uh you don't need to talk so so fast like it sounds like okay. you're just like yeah yeah dude, right. i'm just kind of nervous about it because this is the first time that like we're really like i've really talked about it out loud like it's mostly been like via text or like just in notebooks and whatnot because it's always like been kind of interesting because you know, like, you consider your teachers and, like, you look, like, back on your life and it's, like, what teacher names did you have, like, growing up? Like, definitely in elementary school because, like, your brain isn't really conditioned to, like, many things at the time. So, is, uh, like, I guess your Skype is choppy or at least, uh, yeah, it's cracking up the audio. Other people were hearing that, too, but it'll fix itself in a second. Just try talk, try talking, try talking again. Talk. Hello. Uh, it's still, yeah, it's weird. It's still, like, a little choppy. Um, I don't know. Like okay. that's like that's a good connection thing. Do you want to? Uh, yeah. Do you want to maybe? Uh, I mean, I think uh, we got like another caller who we can jump off to. Uh, I mean, do, do you want to? Uh, just sorry, just try talking again. But if it's choppy, we might have to just like drop you and come back to you later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Skype thing, so I don't know why that's not working. But uh, yeah. But I heard what yeah. you were saying. So. Oh. Okay. But I think it just fixed itself right now, actually. But yeah, like. I, I, <laughs> Yeah, no, it actually did. Okay, but uh, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I think it's um, it's really interesting how like growing up, the universe sort of like puts us in these environments that sort of like literally are like clues as to like who we will be in the future. But yeah, it's it's always, I mean, like even for me, like um, 
I mean, this is something that maybe I've, I've sort of talked about it on the show before, but like my spirit animal is wolf. Like, it, like that's something mm-hmm. that like I've been able to identify with. And like growing up, like I've always had a German shepherd, like always, always, <laughs> always had a German shepherd. Like I've had three of them throughout my lifetime and stuff like that. And I've always had like an affiliation with wolf in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. But like the thing that was really interesting for me and uh, like this is sort of like the big kicker is that like, like i really like again like i just really like knew that my spirit animal was wolf like i i I knew that like i embodied the characteristics of wolf and i learned from it and when i say wolf like i mean like sort of like that leadership role that sort of like caring about community that like ability to be like courageous and tread new path but the thing that was the big kicker is the fact that after i found out that my spirit animal was wolf i found out that my middle name actually translates into wolf shield and i mean when i say at the top of the show, you you know, maybe not, I can't remember if I said it this episode, but I mean, you know, I'll say, I'll introduce myself as Brendan Wolfshield Culleton. Like, that's my actual name. Like, Randall, like R-A-N-D-A-L-L, literally translates into Wolfshield. So, I mean, it just goes to sort of show you that, like, before we even come into this life, like, there's a part of ourselves that chooses a whole bunch of stuff for ourselves. Like, we choose our own parents is kind of one of the ideas, and we choose our own names. And names aren't just names. Like, names are actually, like, an energy that we uh, embody, so to speak. So, I mean, like, my name, like, I am Brendan Wolfshield. And and, uh, and for anybody who's curious about, like, what Brendan means, and I suggest you look that up as well, B-R-E-N-D-O-N. But, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Jess. Um, yeah, and so I had Lily, but she left halfway through the year, which is, um, you know, I don't, I don't really know exactly what the... I never actually looked up what each of, like, the last or the surnames actually means. But, um, mm. yeah, Lily left halfway through to uh, go have her second child, which was a boy. And uh, that's when my life started, you know, like, instead of having my lily pad to, like, blossom into, like, a lotus flower, like, what have you, mm. I had to, like, go through, like, these dark transitions of my life. That's what I really consider it because um, if you take into consideration, like, green, like, the green heart chakra and then, like, learning how to feel and be frank about things, And then, like, I had Lily, which kind of, you know, I I guess I had to create my own lily pad, you know what I mean? But, um, and then the next year for fourth grade, like, I never remember the name of this teacher at all. Like, it was the only teacher that I've ever had. I didn't really like me, and it could have, you know, just been my own transmuted energies, you know, like, I didn't really like myself at that point in time. So, who really knows? It was uh, the year of 2000, or when... I never, yeah, 2001, and uh, then the next year in fifth grade, I had a teacher named Crystal, and you know, like, Crystal, like, resonating frequencies and whatnot, and uh, that's when I started getting into art. I started uh, drawing these things with a friend of mine, which is, uh, you draw out the word boy, and you connect the tops, like, the tops of the Y's to the top of the B, and then you, like, connect the bottom of the Y to the bottom of the B and it creates a boy which you could create a smile in and we called them Gerbers at the time uh, it was just you know some random name but it was like the first like work of art that I really did and then uh, in 6th grade I had a teacher named Mr. Guidus like if you say it like Guidus it kind of like if you say it fast like over and over again like Guidance. 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 Yeah, Guidance. Guidance. Yeah. Guide Us Guide Us Guide Us yeah exactly and uh, that was a yeah, teacher too um, yeah yeah, I really feel like, you know, there's, like, a thing behind that, too. Like, my friend Annie Anderson, um, she had a child in high school, but, like, if you say her name very fast, it sounds like Annie and her son, you know, instead yeah. of Anderson, like, that kind of deal. Um, I was really obsessed with Australian dolphins uh, all through elementary school. I didn't really know why. I think it has something to do with, like, the street name that I live on. I live on Toa Street. It's, like, I don't know if you're familiar with it, really, but, like, pretty much... Like, they use them as markers to, like, mark your way around Australia. Like, I don't remember exactly, like, what years, but, like, you could, like, look it up on Wikipedia. Um, And uh, I just wanted to bring up, like, the word human. Like, if you take it into, like, two different syllables, you have hue and then you have man. So it's, like, different spectrums of, like, different waves of, like, the same rainbow. So Yeah, and man, man refers to, like, mana, like, refers to, like, the energy, like, the energy, the universal energy. Like, yeah, you can take the word man and, and draw it back as to, like, what that means, too. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, Jeff, I, okay, um, this goes in theme with everything you're saying. Um, do you know what the name Jessica actually means? Because I'm going to tell Clairvoyance, you. Clairvoyance, the one who sees. 
okay, yeah, it means that. In specific, it means foresight. So I don't know if you've, like, known... I mean, yeah, you were right when you said, like, clairvoyant. Like, foresight is, like, a, the specific, like, meaning to it that I'm familiar with and stuff, too. So, I mean, that's pretty interesting that, like, you know, you chose that name for yourself again. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Do you, do you want to know my full name meaning? Do you have... Have you sort of decoded it? Yes. I've okay, all right. Many okay, we'll, we'll get your full name, and then from there, we're going to jump on to another caller, because I know we could probably talk all day, but <laughs> let's uh, keep, keep the air. <laughs> yeah. so. Go ahead. Go ahead. For sure. Um, it means the one who sees the sorrows of the sea, or sorrows. It depends on the definition of Marie. Uh, and then just I'll, I'll just read my whole name out first. My name is my full name is Jessica Marie Schroer Smalley, and it means the one who sees the sorrows of the sea, who cuts being small. Cool, cool. Schroer means cut, and Smalley means small. But Smalley was actually translated because it used to be a little bear, but like since like the white man was like out to kill us or whatever, we had to like change it. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Brandon means prince, right? Am I wrong with that? No, that's actually right. You actually got it. Like, Brendan specifically means prince. I mean, there's variations of it, but, like, Brendan, B-R-E-N-D-O-N, goes back to, like, the Irish Celtic uh, origin. So, yeah, my full name, Brendan Randall Culleton, translates to Prince Wolfshield of the Cull Clan. And, like, clan, you know, Culleton is just, like, a clan, like, from, like, Ireland or in Viking. So, like, yeah, like, I'm, like, a Viking who's a wolf who's a prince. And, uh, and Brendan also translates to smelly hair, so that's also the humbling side of it too. Because it was funny, because like growing up, like I I I was told that Brendan just translated into smelly hair. So then like I was always just like, oh, I'm smelly hair, Brendan. I'm like, oh, you know, it's just kind of like, okay, I guess that's cool. And it wasn't until like not too long ago that I'm like, wait a second, there's another translation for this, like Prince. I'm just like, whoa, you know, like that's like a sort of change of everything. So I mean, yeah. So I mean, I mean, it's. I, I I embody that um, definitely. I mean, you know, I'll let people sort of define it in in their own way as to like how they see me, even in terms of like this whole paradigm shifty stuff or whatever. But yeah, it's no coincidence, right? So that's for sure. For Sweet. sure. Um, All right. Well, Jeff, yeah. anything else have that you, you just want to add? Go ahead. Um, I wanted to um, ask you: if, Have you ever heard of the book The Little Prince before? Um, I think I have. Like, is it like a child's book or? Yeah, it's the most popular children's book of all time, but not in it the sounds US. familiar. Maybe not in Canada either, but yeah, definitely look that up. Um, it okay. It you a lot. And uh, cool. I wanted to bring up like my favorite joke because it's like, some, someone told me it once upon a time. Uh, the red wave said to the indigo wave, you're not on my wavelength. And then the indigo wave said, that makes me feel blue. <laughs> <laughs> First time I've heard a wave oriented joke before I so. <laughs> Anyway. Cool. Oh gosh. Okay. All right, well, like, yeah. we'll uh yeah, well, let's let's save it for another episode. <laughs> Sure. But yeah, thank, thanks, thanks for calling in. And again, for everybody who's listening to this, go to Paradigm Shift Central, facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Connecticut. And if you're, especially if you're in Connecticut, connect with Jess and uh, help her out with the community there. So cool. All right, Jess, thanks again for being on the show. Namaste. Much thank appreciated. You. Cool. Take for care. Sure. Bye. You too. Cool. All right. So with that said, we'll move on to the next caller. And uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, actually be able to bring on Ramadasa next. And, uh, I mean, we, we may only have her on for, I don't know, maybe like 20. I mean, just in the sense that I want to keep the lines open for other people as well. Uh, but I did tell her that we would be bringing her on at about this time. So just to not keep her waiting and uh, to keep the show moving along, we will bring on Ramadasa. And, again, Ramadasa is a walk-in. So, again, we'll, we'll just give a quick overview as to, like, what that is. And if you guys have any questions, private message the Paradigm Shift radio thing on the live chat. So if you're in the live chat, scroll up to the top, you'll see Paradigm Shift radio there. Click on it and then private message, and I'll get your questions through there if you have questions. So that said, Ramadasa, we are going to bring you back onto Paradigm Shift Radio. So here we go. Hello, Ramadasa. Yeah, hi. Hey, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Nice to hear you again. <laughs> yeah, cool. So um, just r remind me, where are you calling in from exactly? Uh, Washington State. 
Washington State. Okay, cool. So, all right. Well, there actually is a paradigm shift uh, or DC community out there. So, uh, yeah, just for anybody curious, but I'm sure they could uh, use some help with expanding there. But anyways, so uh, Roman, also just um, maybe before we get into some questions, uh, just sort of again give a recap as to like who you are and uh, what a walk-in is, so to speak. Okay, a walk-in is a. Uh the second, maybe sometimes third or fourth soul in a body. Um, I And a lot of times it's uh, people already know about it. It's rarely just a, hey, I'm stopping by and thought we could trade places sort of deal. Um, it's uh, you decide before you ever get here that you're going to, when a person's going to end their life or it ends because of circumstances. And mm-hmm. another soul comes into that body to finish what they have to do and not have to start at the beginning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just totally fascinating just because, I mean, that's not something that we would ever really be like reading about in a, you know, traditional like scientific curriculum by any means, but uh, it has been documented. I mean, uh, to a degree, and obviously like you yourself are a, a living testament of it, presuming that the person listening to you is able to believe it, so to speak. And I mean, maybe that takes like a little bit of like, quote unquote, like faith, so to speak. But uh, yeah, like in some way, okay, if we were to like, if if we, okay, if my question is like, convince me that you're a walk-in, how would you answer that? I don't think there is any way. I mean, maybe if you talk to my family, they would say, wow, uh, there's a completely different person. My mom didn't even believe in reincarnation until after my accident and I walked in and she was just like, wait, you are not the daughter I remember having. You were somebody mm-hmm. else completely. My voice changed. My my facial features changed a little. It's not like I have a new face, but mm-hmm. you don't look the same. I don't sound the same. I mean, there's all sorts of strange things like that. Yeah. I, you know, there's no way you can convince somebody of your experience. And so, you know, if somebody doesn't want to believe me, that's fine. Because it's yeah. really an unbelievable thing. I wouldn't believe it if somebody told me and I hadn't experienced it. I'd be like, okay, whatever. You go ahead and think that. <laughs> now, um, okay, sorry. I think you already said this, but uh, what was the what was the accident? Like, was it a car accident or what? Was that oh just... yeah, um, it was. I was uh, with a drunk driver. I didn't know him. I didn't know he was drunk, and uh, I really, I guess, I didn't want to go. This is all just what I've been told because I do not remember. Um, and I guess I, we got in the car and he started driving down a country road really fast and uh, all of a sudden the car went off the road at like 70 miles an hour. It flipped several times and landed upside down in a ditch. Uh, since he was drunk, he of course was fine. The guy in the back uh-huh. seat was fine. They pulled me out of the car. I was just covered in blood. They thought I was dead. Like, the driver just held me and was like, oh, my God, I killed her. I killed her. And I remember seeing that. I could see all this from above, and I was watching. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I was watching from above, and I saw that. And then the next thing I remember was there was just a void, and I was waiting. I knew the body had to wake up, and I was like, okay, showtime. I'm just waiting for everything to turn on, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's... um. I mean, (laughs) was there a point where, like, the other soul was sort of leaving and you were going? And did you ever, like, you know, I I could almost picture this, like, in a Hollywood movie as, like, you're sort of, like, going through this void space and you two get to sort of be like, hey, you know, like, she's like, she's like, hey, just take care, take care of the body for me, you know, and like, and like, take care of my mom for me sort of thing, right? Like, all right, it's, it's yours now sort of thing. Did that happen, so to speak? Yeah, yeah, like, she wanted me to say things to certain people and wow. she would make me have dreams to explain certain things. I mean, it was a crazy first six months and I was just like, I really don't know what's going on here. There's so much information and I don't, I was so socially awkward. I really didn't understand anything. It, it was, yeah, it was a rough time. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> I, I can only imagine like what the reaction would have been like for your mother uh, as, as well. Like that just, I mean, was that anything sort of like within like her realm of psychology? Like it just must have been just so foreign to her as well, right? Like how was that experience? Well, yeah, she was just really concerned. She was just like, you know, glad I was alive, first of all. 
Mm -hmm. But then she thought, well, you know, maybe the doctors are right. It's just like some sort of amnesia. It'll come back. It's just her trying to figure out a way to explain everything. And, you know, the more it got on, she was just like, no, there's somebody different here. You were, you know, granted I had a little bit of brain damage, but it wasn't so traumatic that I should change personalities. And mm -hmm. it was nowhere in the area of the brain. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm, I'm getting a question here, and, uh, and let me just read this. Okay, so this is a question that we have from a person in the live chat. And uh, I think this is from Shane, actually. Like, my chat window is really small, and I can't see things properly. But it says, um, so the person you're seeing to now is just talking about play. And none. Yeah, okay. So, well, I mean, he's just looking for clarification, but he's saying, so the person you're speaking to now is just occupying the lady's body and not the lady. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's what I understand, too. Like, the lady, like, this, you know, the, the identity uh, you know, because oftentimes, like, when we think, like, what is a soul, so to speak, like, the simple metaphor is that, like, this body is a vehicle, and the soul is the driver. So, therefore, like, you are a new driver occupying the same vehicle, so to speak. Like, I mean, yeah, and the identity that was the lady has literally, like, passed on, you know, like, moved back into the void and, and stuff. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, sort of answer that in your own way, but, I mean, that's from what yeah, I understand, I yeah. that's exactly it, uh, and, uh, I mean, a lot of times I get just so confused. I was talking to my parents last time I was back seeing them, and I asked them a question. I was like, was that before I was dead? And they just looked at me like, uh, what do you mean before you were dead? And I was just like, oh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I've had another lady who I've talked to. Um, actually, if anybody's interested, you can see this for yourself. Go to paradigmshiftcentral dot com, and then on the left side, you'll see the site beyond site episodes, which are something that I did in two thousand ten. Go to episode two, and episode two is a lady, uh, Tammy, and she's talking about her near death experience, and it was really interesting because in her near death experience, like she was talking about like how she like went. Like, she was, she literally, it wasn't, like, a near-death experience. Like, she literally died. Like, there was, like, a moment where, like, she was, like, on the other side. And she was sort of, like, surrounded by, like, a council of light, so to speak. And they were sort of, like, showing her things of her future that hadn't happened yet that she had agreed to do. And, you know, they were saying, you know, like, no, Tammy, like, it's not time for you to go yet. Like, you need, you, you've chosen, like, you, you are going back like sort of thing and then she was just sort of like processing this but it was very interesting how she said like it was you know almost like in a room surrounded by monitors so to speak um what is your memory like of like these moments of being uh within the void so to speak like beyond like the reality beyond this physical dimension like what can you share about us of your experiences that you remember from that like before i was waiting in the void is that what you're asking uh, whether it be before or even just, like, in general, so to speak? I guess it's all really at the same time. But, like, you know, so so you can understand it, it would be before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it uh, really, it was just a lot of preparation. That's what I really remember is just getting ready, uh, making sure she had certain dreams to know that I was coming because I didn't want her forgetting. It was really, really important. Um I don't know, but there's, uh, it seems there's a lot of walk-ins since 1980. There's just mm. an incredible number, like unheard of, never happened before. And obviously we're all here for a reason. And so I, was, I had to make sure she knew that she couldn't back out of the deal, so to speak. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was just a lot of preparation. And then uh, just, uh, it, it's like a... <laughs> It's kind of funny. The only way that really explains it is like uh, the movie The Matrix when they would plug in. Mm -hmm. That's sort of how it was before I got to the void. It's like you had to plug in and get yourself in like, you know, the right frame of mind to be in a physical body. It, it's sort of like a, you know, it's a preparation, like a ritual of preparation that has to be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I, I'm really interested in this conversation because I'm seeing some people in the live chat and they're talking and, and maybe just to, sort of like reiterating what I, I asked. But I mean, their question that they're asking to people in the live chat, they're asking, has any does anyone have a feeling they remember what it was like before they were born? Like that feeling that you get when you're cut off from the world and at peace of mind. Um, I mean, yeah, like I, I just think like that is such a 
such an incredibly uh, amazing experience and all of us have had it but not all of us can remember it because I mean you know like whether or not you believe in reincarnation you will experience this at some point in your life but part of the goal is to be able to actually go into this experience to actually like move through death with a more conscious awareness in the same way that you would like move into a dream with conscious awareness you want to be able to like move through death with uh, conscious awareness as well and be able to like move into that next step <clears throat> and not be asleep in the process but I mean yeah like um, obviously, you know, people sort of say like, oh, like it, it's warm, it's like light. I mean, the truth of the matter is it's almost ineffable. But uh, can you explain more to us about like, uh, you know, like the the space that we're in before we're born, so to speak? Well, it's, there's like, oh, what do I want to say? Like a basic structure, but it's a little different for everyone. I mean, the whole everyone's existence is a little different for everyone. Uh, even though you're, you know, practically formless, it's still, you still have a filter for that perception. So, it, what I see might be different from what somebody else sees might be different from mm -hmm. what somebody else sees. It's all different perspectives. Mm -hmm. But, uh, from my experience, it's just, I, I don't, it's a lot of light. Like, for the very first maybe a couple of years I couldn't see people's faces when I was here. Really? All I saw was just light. And not necessarily like an aura, it was just a light. Like, like uh, maybe like their whole head was a light bulb or something, you know, it was just light. But it was different for each person because that's how I could recognize them by their light. Mm -hmm. And it's so strange, like, as it went on, like, like seeing people's faces now just kind of weirds me out. I'm like, oh, wow, that's what you look like. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just used to, you know, people looking like, like light, not like things. Uh -huh. That's what it's kind of used to, like a field of different light. I yeah, guess. yeah. I yeah. guess it's, you know, like what sort of defines the reality that we're in is the filters that we have on. And, and you know, there's that quote, uh, William Blake, if, uh, if man, you know, if, if man were to remove, or sorry, if you pull back the, the veils of perception, then man would see the world as it is, infinite. And, you know, when we don't have these filters on, we literally see the world for what it is, and we see it as light. Like, it's literally light and sacred geometry unfolding infinitely upon itself. And, and in the same way, like, you know, it's not uncommon for what... It, it goes in line with what you're saying about being able to see the people's faces as light, because, like, we often forget that we physically, our bodies, like, actually are, like, light. Like, we are just condensed light. And so, I mean, like, with you having come back from that space, like, it seems as if, like, your filters, like, it took a while for them to sort of, like, readjust, so to speak, so we're sort of seeing, uh, you know, beyond the veil, or, you know, your your filters, like, just weren't weren't fully engaged, and, uh, yeah, like, that was... No, it's just that's just a really really interesting experience because I mean I think being able to understand that those experiences are real and that they do exist just sort of helps us understand a bit more of the context as to like who and what we are within this reality and and you know a lot of people talk about like oh you know we're multidimensional beings and uh, you know infinite light and stuff like that but I mean to be able to hear people who have seen it firsthand and, and be able to explain it in the words just helps us get more of a better understanding of it because so many of us don't remember that we haven't seen that you know we're just so stuck in the physical and and, and uh yeah it's just it's just really interesting and I, and I really appreciate you being on the show with us here tonight to talk about it so um what else uh i mean you know in terms of like your mission so to speak as to like why you uh incarnated this time around like what using the show as a platform what else uh would you like to be able to share with like this global audience that we have here tonight Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> I'm sort of yeah, keeping it open and ended, of course. But oh uh. uh, wow! I I just all of this like uh, I've just been trying to. Uh, at, at first, when I got here, I was just like, "Well, I'm a servant. I got to do everything. I got to you know help people figure stuff out." And a lot, for a while, it did work. It did, but then I would leave people and be like, "Okay, now you're on your own and do what I told you." And they would just like fall flat on their face and then blame me and. I was just like, okay, so this isn't working. I've I got to find another way. So I had to go through a learning process of how to get to, you know, uh, how do I get the message across? And I'm still having a hard time, but now that people are waking up, they're a lot more receptive to what I have to say, and it's just becoming yeah. easier. 
And so, yeah, I mean, anything, uh, you know, that they can read online is awesome. What you're doing is awesome. That's why I called in uh, last week. So I was just like, this is great. People actually are, you know, really interested in this stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just, oh, are you serious with this new age stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because earlier in the live chat, I'd used the term new age and somebody had like questioned me about it. And I was just like, well, you know, I don't really like the term, but that is how, you know, some people are, are, it's easier for them to understand when I say new age concepts. They're like, yeah. oh, okay, so talking about this realm of things. And yeah, it's, yeah. It's, put the label it's, on it. Yeah, kind of steers them in the right direction, but yet I don't like the label. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, sorry, was there more to that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I I, I think uh, yeah, just I, I hear what you're saying. Like you're here to help destigmatize uh, the aspects of like reality that historically have been stigmatized. Like especially within the last like you know decade, as more of it's been coming to the surface. Like so much of it is to many people, it feels like it's brand new. Though you know, we always say like this is a process of remembering. And uh, once people start to sort of realize that it's a process of remembering, they sort of start to get it, so to speak. So, I mean, yeah, like you're here to help more people not only understand your story, but to understand their story, to understand like their place within this reality and their potential within this reality. So, yeah, no, that's really cool. We're like, we're all here to help pull each other up. Definitely. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, one of the best things you can do is I, I've run into so many people they're just so afraid to like let who they are out. They're just so afraid, and I understand. You know there are consequences, <laughs> but you really have to just move beyond the consequences and deal with them. Just be like, you know, I there's no other alternative to me being me. I, there's nothing else. But mm-hmm. I may as well die if I can't be myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can just do that to the fullest. That's a huge step right there. Totally. Yeah, like they, I'm just sort of reading some stuff in the live chat right now. But, you know, a, a good metaphor that I heard kind of going back to what we were talking about, about like this death experience. Like I think being able to talk about death in itself is a really uh, important subject because, I mean, you know, death is a part of life, so to speak. But uh, uh, one metaphor that I've heard uh, is this idea that like death is like taking off a tight boot. And I think that's just like an excellent way of putting it. You know, like at that moment of death, it's sort of like this release and you're sort of like expanding, like there actually is like a visceral sensation, like you're just like opening back up into the place from like from what you came sort of thing. And uh, not to like get like off the topic, but I mean, it is relevant. And I know a lot of people are always interested in it. And it hasn't really been something that has totally been brought up much on Paradigm Shift Radio uh, historically, but it's always something that I am interested in talking about. And, you know, people are saying, you know, like, I want to be able to experience this. Like, how do I experience this? Like, in addition to being uh, involved in, like, deeper states of meditation, which is the primary uh, method that, like, we here at Paradigm Shift endorse, like, there are other aspects that have to be acknowledged in terms of, like, pieces of the puzzle. And one of those experiences is an experience with DMT and uh, dimethyltryptamine. And the reason for that is just, like, when it's yeah and and i don't even know like how much of detail i should get into this but it's just something that i just wanted to mention that you know if people want to experience death without dying research experiences with dmt that people have experienced and find out more about that but i'm not going to get too much into it, even explaining what dmt is right now so if people want to find out more about that maybe just tell me that you want to talk about it and we'll talk about that later in the show but um yeah ramadasa uh, i was thinking before we even get too far into the episode would you be interested in uh leading us into our meditation cuz like i would actually be able to do our meditation uh pretty soon and then be able to sort of like clear um like open ourselves up so that we get like a nice flow going on for the last hour of the episode instead of having to like qu- squish it into the end if you know what i'm saying so would you be interested in leading us into our meditation uh maybe not tonight i'm really not feeling well and so okay. i'm not like you know uh, All right. I'm just sitting here for too long. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, totally, totally. No, no, I, I understand. I just, you know, wanted to put it out there and stuff. So, oh, no, okay. I appreciate the offer. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no offense taken. So it's cool. All right. Well, uh, um, with that said, though, I, I would like to be able to move into the meditation soon. And I'm not seeing too many other questions coming up in the live chat. So anybody listening in the live chat, just uh, if you have any questions, ask them now in the live chat, and uh, we'll just uh, be able to try and fit those in. But if there are no questions, then we'll just sort of 
segue ourselves into the meditation. But I mean, yeah, like even in terms of like the topic of meditation, like how uh, how involved are you uh, with meditation? Like, is it part of your practice? Oh yeah, it has been ever since I uh, figured out that I wanted to be a Hindu. I like read every religious text and figured out this is the one that makes sense to me. So I started doing the breathing exercises, exercises, the meditation, and uh, yeah, instantly I was like, this is something I need to do. Uh, from the accident, I have chronic pain, and that is like one of the few things that takes away the pain. It's something I do every day, sometimes many, many times a day. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. Mm, for sure. Cool. All right, well, just uh, within the short time that you're answering that, there was another uh, question that came uh, in through the live chat that I'm seeing. Um, okay, this first, like, this is an interesting question, and I'm not really sure if you have an answer for this, but it's more just like a question put out to the universe, I guess. But the question is, what if you want to walk in to come in so that you can just go home? So say if you're a person and, you know, you don't want to like be like, oh, you know, I want to commit suicide, but you're just like, you know, part of me wants to go home, so to speak, quote unquote. Uh, do you have an answer for that? Like, what if is there a choice that can be made in this lifetime to see that happen? Or is that something that's more decided upon before we incarnate into this body, so to speak? I'm you know? not going to say it's impossible, but it's more than likely improbable that you can yeah. do it while you're still alive. That is something that is like a serious, serious matter that's gone over a million times before yeah. it's agreed upon before you ever both get into a body. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it does happen. I've heard of it maybe once. And, uh, you know, I have to believe what the person says. But I just, I don't think it's something that happens very often. And so, I mean, th on the same hand, I've heard, I can't count with people. Just recently, I want to go home. Oh, I can't take this anymore. I want to go home. Mm -hmm. it's stress among all of us. We're all just like, this is, I'm exhausted. I want to go home. Uh -huh. So people, and it's just like a common thing. We're all here together. we got to stick it out. You know, totally. we find out something, yeah, we're tired. But, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't leave <Yeah>. yet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I yeah, totally. I mean, absolutely. There's a lot of people who do, uh, you know, they talk about that they sort of suffer from fatigue but i mean i think that's where like um the community aspect is so important because if we were just like isolating ourselves it's so easy to just like repeat those thoughts to ourselves in our mind and to make up that story but i mean with the help of the community it just helps us boost each other you know i, I use the term boost as such a key word and and that's really what we're able to do so i mean you know if if you might be saying like oh you know i'm i'm getting sort of tired or you know like i'm slacking on my on my practice but then you hear about other people who are engaged in their practice a little bit more and then it helps you to be like, hey, you know, like if they're doing it, I can do it sort of thing and just helps us pull us up forward. Like uh, just as an example, one thing um, that was brought up in the Paradigm Shift meeting the other day, uh, one of the buddies uh, at the meeting, he was talking about how recently he's been engaging with meditation first thing in the morning uh, since Lent. So, I mean, almost every morning he's been like waking up at sunrise and uh, getting involved with meditation. Like, and that's a very, very interesting experience. And like that made me want to do it because, I mean, I meditate, but like I don't meditate first thing in the morning, let alone like as much as I theoretically could. But like when I heard him talking about it, I'm just like, damn, you know, like what's my excuse? Like, why aren't I meditating first thing in the morning? And then to understand that, like in the process of doing so, like you're opening yourself up to like greater experiences and you're just like helping yourself align more with your authentic self sort of thing. So, I mean, yeah, that was just a interesting thing that came out of the meeting there, like the idea of meditating first thing in the morning. Like there's even the idea that there's like particular energy uh, that exists. Uh, within those times of the day specific to the first thing in the morning. So it's very interesting to meditate then. So for anybody listening to that, take that as a, like, consider that like an inspirational uh, challenge for yourself is to try meditating first thing in the morning, not just once, but to actually like make it a part of your practice and to sort of like see, see what happens. Cause I guarantee you something will happen. So, but you won't know until you try basically. So, but anyways, yeah, just something I wanted to add there. Cool. But yeah, anyways, um, go ahead. Inspire each other. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, collective inspiration, so, yeah. Yeah. For sure, yeah, and uh, yeah, t totally. So, um, Ramadasa, I think we'll move on to our meditation soon. Was there anything else that you'd like to add before we uh, sort of let you go for now? 
Uh, no, I think that'll be all. Uh, I guess if anyone has any questions, I'll uh, go over to the computer and check out the live chat. Totally. And I'll add your link into the Facebook, if that's okay with you. Can I do that? So can people add you on Facebook? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I, hey, so, last week I met some really awesome people, so please, yeah. that was really cool. Awesome. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, so for anybody who's in the live chat, just feel free to add Ramadasa on Facebook. I just posted that into the live chat. So for anybody who's listening to this show uh, without the live chat, her Facebook page is facebook.com slash Ramadasa dot Jivatma, which is J J I V A T M A. I'm not even sure if I pronounced that right, but <laughs> close enough. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, just check the show notes uh, once the YouTube episode's up, and you'll find it there for sure. But uh, yeah, so Ramadasa, thank you once again for being here with us tonight. It is greatly appreciated, and I'm sure we will be hearing from you in the future as well. So, Of course, and uh, good luck with your travels, and I'll try and help yeah. you out in any way I can. Much appreciated. Awesome. All right. All right. Talk Good to night. You later. Bye. Take care. Cool. All right, guys. So again, that was Ramadasa, the walk-in who we had on the show previously. And uh, before we move into our meditation, I'd just like to be able to get uh, an idea of where people are listening to right now into like globally into the show. So for everybody who's in the live chat, post your location right now. And I'm just going to give a quick list of like where everybody is sort of listening in from, because it's always interesting to think that when we do our meditation, we're going to be able to like connect the grid of like all our different locations, recognizing that each one of us is like an individual node or beacon. So as they all start coming in now, let me try and read them off real fast. Where are they? Hold on. Scroll thing. So, okay. I see why. Oh, wow. It's like scrolling fast than I can read. So hold on guys. <laughs> Um, Wyoming, uh, oh man, it's like my chat thing is too small and it's not scrolling properly. I apologize. Um, okay. So, okay. All right. Let me start off. Queensland, Dresden, um, Wisconsin, uh, Pennsylvania, London, Ontario, Michigan, Indiana, England, UK, uh, Powie, Powley, I always mispronounce that, uh, Long Island, New York, and uh, Wyoming again, and Erie, sorry, Erie, Pennsylvania, um, and, uh, Queensland, Australia, another London, Ontario, and okay, and I can't actually scroll up any further because every time you guys send a message, it bumps me back down. So, and uh, more from Asheville, uh, another from Wisconsin, Birmingham, UK, Eastwick, New Jersey, and uh, yeah. So I mean, any of those that I missed, you know who you are. But the fact is, we got a global audience listening to the show tonight, as per usual. And again, make sure that you guys check out ParadigmShiftCentral.com and consider starting up a community in your area because that is something that is definitely going to be able to help spark those synchronicities and help you meet new people and all the tools that you need to do so are on the website and if you need any help feel free to message paradigm shift central or facebook.com slash paradigm shift central or add me personally on facebook at facebook.com slash skull babylon so with that said let's get ready to move into our meditation guys so i'll just sort of walk us through this one and we'll keep it fairly uh fairly simple and like meditation is actually something that um, for those of you who don't know, like I actually uh, every Tuesday I actually teach a uh, seniors yoga and meditation class, and uh, that's always like a really interesting experience because like I'm actually opening them up to a lot of these paradigm shifty ideas, and it's really interesting because I mean just because they're in the senior category doesn't mean that they're not interested in it, but at the same time some of them may actually be new to a lot of this information, so it's really exciting. For them to be able to like get engaged with some of the conversations. So if you haven't yet, maybe feel free to uh, try talking to some uh, seniors in your area and just sort of like ask them about certain things or, or just see like you know try introducing like topics about chakras or just sort of like tell them like hey have you ever heard about the idea that like everything is vibration and light vibrating at frequencies and stuff you know to sort of see what they say or whatever. But uh, yeah, so it's really fun. Um, okay, guys, so again, let's just get comfortable, and I'm just going to pick a specific audio track. So we will do, let's do, uh, yeah, okay, so we're going to do sacral meditation for this one. So um, one sec. No, I'm not particular. I mean, I have, like, the whole, like, selection of uh, singing bowl. Like, this is going to be singing bowl audio. 
but uh the, the actual chakra like sacral uh i mean don't get too caught up on the actual like chakra that's associated with what we're going to be doing for this meditation something that i try to bring into my own meditation and this is something that i'd like to be able to encourage you to bring into your own meditation is the idea of bringing the act of focus into your meditation so basically with this meditation I want you to be able to focus on either your breath or the singing bowl and then maintain that as best as you can for the five minute duration of the track and notice that when thoughts come into your mind because they will they always will just be able to acknowledge them but then bring yourself back to the focus of either your breath or the audio of the singing bowl so I'll just explain that again as we get into it. But again, so everybody just get comfortable as they need to. So just gently place your hands on your lap or just place them gently on your thighs. Put your feet nice on the ground or maybe you're sitting cross-legged. Wherever you are, just get nice and comfortable. So let's just begin with that first breath. This might be the first real breath of the day. So just a gentle inhale through the nose and out through the nose. Now, if you notice that there might be any additional tension in your shoulders, just gently relax. With each breath, just become more and more calm. So just begin, just a quick little visualization. Just bring your awareness to your heart. Just feel the palpitation of it. Feel that beat of the heart. Now bring your awareness to your feet and use your visualization to feel the heartbeat of your entire body focused within your feet. Just gently move yourself up to your knees Feel your heartbeat in your knees with each new part of your body, just allowing that part to become more relaxed. And just bring your awareness to your hips, your groin area, feeling the heartbeat within your groin. Just bring your awareness up to your belly. Again, just using the breath, with each breath, just becoming more relaxed, more calm. Just bring your awareness to your heart again. You should be able to hear it at this point. Just bring your awareness up to your throat. Just relax your throat. Bring your awareness up to your face. Just relax your cheeks. Relax your tongue. Remove the tongue from the top of your mouth. Just relax the eyes. Relax the eyebrows. Move your awareness to your entire head. Perhaps even feeling the heartbeat within your third eye within the top of the brow. Now just take another breath. Just bring your awareness to your entire whole, to your body. Just feeling your heartbeat throughout the entire body. Now at this point, as you become more calm, become more prepared, to actually begin the meditation. Bring your awareness back to your breath. And really focus on that breath. Find the pattern. Gentle inhale. Gentle exhale. Gentle inhale. Gentle exhale. Repeat those words if it helps you as well. And again, continue to do this. Continue to challenge yourself by keeping your focus on your breath 
or the sound of the singing bowl. And the track starting now. So again, let's keep the focus on the breath or the track. Any thoughts that might come into your mind, just let them pass. And use this moment to refine your mind, to reclaim control of who you are. Continue to do this. Continue to practice your meditation.
So again, just bring your awareness back to your breath. Just take another mindful inhale. Feeling that alignment. Remembering that sensation. The same sensation that you can return to at any point in the day. At any point when you find that your mind wanders the way it so commonly does, the way it is so commonly conditioned to, bring it back to that point of focus that you consciously choose to bring it back to. Just take another breath here. Your breath is your tool to become more of who you are. And gently just begin to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes to the room around you. All right, so welcome back, everyone. Thank you again for being a part of that. And I just want to talk about a couple things in regards to meditation. And I'm sure I've talked about it on the past in the show, but it's this idea that the reason why we meditate is because it's a practice. It's because we have to take what we do during our meditation with us when we leave our meditation. And this is the way that the traditional yogis and the mystics, this is how they talked about it, among other many ways. It was not just something that you did just casually, just as a hobby. It was something that you did to change your being, to become more aware and more in control of your own mind, to be able to practice focusing your mind and then to take that awareness out with you into the world and to be able to identify the parts of yourself that are programmed, that are your subconscious, that so consciously, so constantly try to convince itself that it is you, when in fact, it is not. Depending on numbers, some people will say that 97% of the thoughts in your mind are not your own. They are conditioned. They are ego it is the 3% that is pure. It is being able to identify that 97%. At any moment of the day, being able to identify your ego in action. That is why you meditate. To be able to recognize when those thoughts come into your mind. And then to simply move them away. To not grab onto them. To not identify with them. There's an interesting story that came up in our paradigm shift meeting the other day. And it was talking about how they condition elephants. At a young age, when they have elephants in captivity, they will take a rope and they will tie this rope to a stick. And they will put this stick in the ground. Rather, it won't just be a stick, it will be a log. Something that will keep them in one place. As the elephants get older... They continue to keep them tied to this log. But the log becomes smaller to the point where it is not actually something that could hold the elephant in place. It is just a mere stick in the dirt attached with rope. That is what conditions them. That is what holds them back. So we must be able to identify what is it that conditions us? What is the stick that holds us back from becoming more of who we are? And a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people in this conscious community are perhaps superficial in some way or another in terms that we like to talk about all of these interesting subjects, yet rarely do we practice them. We are interested in ideas such as chakras and deeper states of meditation, 
yet we seldom seek to experience them for ourselves. Many of you know what chakras are, yet how many of you have consciously engaged yourselves with an experience so that you can know what chakras are? Because until you know through your own experience, you are merely believing with blind faith, merely listening to what someone else told you. So I encourage you to seek knowledge through experience. A lot of people will tell you that it's about asking questions and finding answers. Yet the truth, the real truth, is between the question and the answer. It is the moment of being. It is the moment of doing and experiencing. So recognize the stick that is holding you back and understand that it is merely there for you to be restrained by. You are free. The only thing that holds you back is the side of your mind that convinces you that you are not free to begin with. So, free your mind. And practice. Practice your meditation. Don't just talk about it. Don't just be superficial. Don't just share a bunch of fi- don't just share a bunch of pictures on Facebook. Sharing pictures on Facebook will not help you develop your practice. It's nice. It's trivial. But it is not helping you develop your practice. You have to move away from the computer and move within your own mind if you really, really want to experience what this reality has to offer you. So just keep that in mind, guys. So there are a few other things that came up in the meeting last night. Just some really interesting stuff. But uh don't necessarily need to get into that too much. One of the really interesting things we talked about was actually relationships. And uh Yeah, but we won't we won't really talk about that. I mean maybe we'll save it for another show because I know it's a topic that we haven't really gotten into uh in, in the past, but just being able to talk about like how so uh so commonly like we get into like relationships like emotional uh and like even sexual relationships and uh they're just like very um like um self deceiving would perhaps be the word so yeah but we'll save up for another show but uh i mean i just think it's a really important thing to talk about but again guys we here us listening, all of you listening to the show right now, whether it be live or in the past or, you know, in the present or in the future. If you're listening in the past, and congratulations on finding a working time machine. But uh, we're a soul group. You know, you're here for a reason. And we have small soul groups, and then we have bigger soul groups. Like, obviously, like, the entire Earth is uh, one big soul group. But we have smaller soul groups, and those are the paradigm shift communities as well. Those are the people who you have yet to meet yet. Those are the people who you are already in contract with to run into. But until you go out and engage yourself in this reality, you won't meet them quite just yet. So just keep that in mind. That there are people in your immediate community who you have the potential to meet should you step out your front door and engage yourself with the experience that will open you up to synchronistically running into them. Like I said, you have all the tools to do so. So... With that said, guys, we will move into some more callers on to this episode of the show. And uh, let me just check with uh, one person who may be coming in. And, uh, yeah, I mean, in addition to that, maybe just leave some comments in the live chat, guys. What would you guys like to see us talk about in the last 30 minutes of the show? I mean, it's interesting now that we sort of do the meditation. And uh, because when we sort of do the meditation, it's sort of changes the vibration i guess you could say it sort of like opens up like uh we might be able to listen a little bit better we might be a little less agitated things might begin to flow a little bit more naturally so i i enjoy and i'm glad that we actually got to do that meditation in there so 
I do have one person who will be um, who's going to be trying to call in right now, and uh, I'm just going to twiddle my thumbs until they do that. But uh, let me just see here. Yeah, so just a reminder, guys, uh, paradigmshiftcentral.com slash donate. If you haven't yet, feel free to donate because uh, it's much appreciated. And from there, you'll find the links to the Journey to Lucidity doc and uh, the Paradigm Shift Central Fund and uh, the Go uh, the Future Projects Fund for uh, myself, which is pretty much the same thing as the Journey to, to, to Lucidity Fund. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, obviously, like you guys helping contribute to those projects helps me create something that will literally change the world. And keep your eyes open for the promo video that will be going up for the Journey to Lucidity doc in the next couple of days. So, I'm just double checking. I think I do have the person uh, calling into the show who I am going to bring on. And then I do have another person who's lined up after that, unless we get some other people. And let me just check what's happening in the live chat right now. <laughs> Yeah, people are like talking about flames and stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, like I think, you know, relationships is an interesting uh, topic, but maybe we'll save that more for a later show. But uh, hold on one second, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm just seeing if he's calling in or not. But anyways, um, <laughs> let me just read some of the notes that I had from my meeting last night. So, uh, okay, just like from the top of the page without even really giving a context, because like whenever we have our meetings at our Paradigm Shift community, we uh, always like, I always take notes and then I try and like reiterate some of the stuff into the show today. So just from the top of the page, this is like halfway through the meeting, it says uh, ego and energy, um, legion of ego, see ego in action, eliminate it, you give energy to it, aggregate, to know oneself, one must be separate from oneself. That's a key thing. To know oneself, one must be separate from oneself. So that means like being able to like step outside of yourself in a given situation and being able to identify like what is actually you and what is actually like, you know, that part of you that might be sort of responding uh, like inappropriately or unjustly, so to speak. You know, just being able to identify the ego. What else we got? Um, yeah, here's a good one. Trust someone who is looking for truth, not someone who has found it. That's a key one. That is, like, so key. You know, a lot of people, especially, like, in this conscious community, will tell you, like, this is it. This is the way, you know, this is how it works sort of thing. But, uh, again, trust someone who is looking for truth, not someone who claims to have found it. Um, what is happiness? True happiness. You know, subjective definition of what happiness is. Um, exuberance to everything that is. Stretching and expanding consciousness. I think stretching and expanding are good uh, adjectives uh, for in terms of conscious expansion. Uh, atomic communication. That was like talking about like how, yeah, like cells communicating and stuff, like atomic communication. I think that's pretty cool. Soul group, which is something I already talked about. Um, helping inner understanding. And uh, even just the idea, and here at the bottom it says, don't have to be spiritual. And that's sort of talking about the idea that, like, these paradigm shift communities aren't just about, like, being spiritual, so to speak. I mean, you know, it's quite, I, I enjoy when we have, like, people who aren't necessarily spiritual involved in the conversation coming at it from a different angle. You know, someone who might be very scientific. And not to say science and spirit are two different things, because obviously everybody knows that they're merging. But, uh, yeah, that's just one thing to keep in mind when you're, like, perhaps involved with your paradigm shift community is to not just promote it as like a spiritual a spirituality club. I mean, you know, what is spirituality? Life in itself is spiritual. But I mean, to promote it that way might sort of stigmatize it. So, you know. Um, yeah, and that was pretty much uh, just it from one page. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other notes here. Okay, so anyways, I don't have the um, person who's trying to call in just yet. So I'm going to bring up another buddy actually and uh oh it'll actually be kind of cool to have both of them on back to back and you'll see why in a second but anyways uh aaron if you're ready i'm gonna bring you onto the show i know you've been uh holding in the queue here for quite a while so aaron uh i'm gonna bring you onto the show now so brace yourself man here we go yo Hi, yo, yo aaron how's it going hey, man? Man. cool man welcome welcome to the show the First time on the radio show, but we've been like having a. Aaron's been a part of like the after party hangouts uh, on a few occasions. So cool, man. Now yeah. uh, just tell people uh, where are you calling from? Uh, UK, Birmingham, uh, Centre UK. So yeah, man. Sweet, 
Sweet, man. And, uh, well, first of all, I'll just mention, because uh, I just set, said it there, but to anybody who's maybe new to the show, we will be doing a Google Hangout after party yeah. after the show. So feel free to check out that as well if you hadn't maybe gotten onto the show or just want to be involved in more conversation that's a little bit more casual. And the links for that will be posted in the live chat as well as facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio. But anyways, so, uh, yeah, Aaron, what's uh, what's on your mind, man? What would you like to bring to the show tonight? Um, well, I was just... Looking at some uh, ley line stuff actually, I was, I was speaking to you about it before about the um, yeah yeah it's basically about how these lines basically get crossed over the world and keep getting looped over and looped over and then cross touched over each other and like all these lines seem to link up on all the ancient points in the world and there's like hundreds all over the world you've got like the pyramids in Egypt the Machu Picchu Easter Islands Nazca Giza. Tio, is it Tio, I can't say it, Tio, Tio, I can't say that, but <laughs> there's a bunch of these places, all like ancient Japanese places and ancient Chinese places as well, all over the world that line up on these ley lines, mm-hmm. and uh, the theory is that this is like the energy grid that gets talked about sometimes, like the mass conscious energy grid, um, a lot of people might have saw it on spirit science before as well, like the lines going around the world, mm-hmm. and it's uh, supposed to be a big way of of tuning into these energy points, which is why they place these objects in these places, like obelisks and pyramids and these enhancers for energy. And mm-hmm. it's just a, it's a cool point. Just if you can look at them and find a place near you where one of these energy points meets, you can go there and try to tune into that energy and enhance it. I mean, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, there's even the idea that like the uh, different, you know, the Earth itself, in the same way that like we have a body that has chakras, like the Earth itself is a giant body, it has a giant toroidal field, and it actually has like chakras as well. And I know like these Earth chakras actually like align to specific locations. Uh, I mean, I can't remember yeah. them off the top of my head and stuff. But do you have any? Do you know the info on that? Not that I would. I haven't, I haven't looked into that to be honest, man. But yeah. I do. I know what you mean. Though. There is. Um, yeah. There's like main points where all the things cross over a lot more in a certain point, and in that one point, the energy is a lot more powerful. The funny thing is where these points have been crossing over recently in the past years. Uh, oil has been coming out of the floor, which is mostly where all these uh, big companies around the world are getting the oil from, because because um, mm-hmm. because the world's had, had so much negative energy lately that Earth's essentially bleeding which is this oil that you see. And if you do look at it from a Google perspective, you do see that from the Google Earth map, you will see that these, these points are just like cracks in the ground and just bleeding out this ready, oozy stuff. Man, it's just really weird. Oh, yeah, um, it is kind of weird, yeah. But yeah, man, it's, just, it's pretty cool, man. I still think you can enhance good energy there, obviously, because that's changing very quickly, clearly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, yeah, again, you know, like, ley lines, like, we were trying to just, like, understand, like, more about what they are, like, yeah, it just seems to be, like, intersecting points of, uh, you know, energy grids that just sort of uh, amplify, you know, they sort of create, like, vortexes, so to speak. Uh, Now, do you have any sort of intersecting points near your location? I mean, you said Birmingham is, like, the center of UK, right? Like, surely there's, there's, like, one in... um, there's one in Scotland, um, yeah. in, at the Highlands, but it's getting up there and it does look a bit dodgy, like to be honest, because there's absolutely nothing around and getting up to the Highlands is a difficult thing anyway, because mm-hmm. it's just pure mountain land and there's no roads near there. So, I mean, I'm, I want to do, I do want to take a hike up there one of the days and try and find it. So, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One day, definitely. I mean, there is a bunch over America, but it's in like, I think there's, there's one in uh, some, um, Oh, I can't remember where it is. It's in like these, what do you call it? Um, a swamp. It's in a swamp, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somewhere. I don't know where, but I saw it on, on a picture and it's in a swamp and it looked really uh, unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, like it, I, I think what's uh, a really interesting idea, you know, when people sort of get into this idea of um, exploring the other planes, like the astral planes, whether it be through like lucid dreaming, states of meditation and stuff, there's also the idea that like these. Um, you know, in, in addition to these ley lines, like these energy grids, like there's different monolithic structures that are built upon them. But the thing that's really interesting to me is the idea that like if you were to go to somewhere like Stonehenge, like in the astral plane, you would actually like see a bunch of activity there, so to speak. You know, like there's sort of a, those are sort of like points that attract the energy of uh, us because, you know, like we are ourselves like energy and we're just sort of like drawn to them. And uh, in particular, like, it's really interesting because, like, I mean, for uh, for myself, like, I know 
there's like some sort of interesting grid lines like uh where i am which is like southwestern ontario uh like you know i'm in london ontario canada which is uh you know just uh near kind of it's north of new york for those of you who have no idea where canada is <laughs> but um it's uh it's really interesting cuz like i definitely feel that there's like some interesting energies in southwestern ontario and this is sort of like reminiscent just by like um, there seems to be like a lot of um, like Freemason lodges and stuff, and uh, even yeah. just like UFO activity, so to speak. And that's the thing that's always interested me is yeah, the idea that like relate to it a lot, like the uh, Freemasons and stuff. They do. Yeah. They are pin- they are pretty much pinpointed at all these locations. It's really unusual. Yeah. Uh, there's, the- uh, there's one grid in London, in England, and it's um, it actually shapes out like the Star of David, and it's like at each point of it, it's like you got Ten Downing Street on one of the points, and then the but and then the London wheel, like the London eye, and then I think it's the um, London clock thing. I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, you know, just all these different points that are all on this star of David shape. It's just really unusual. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, like the thing that always uh, sort of like made me think was the idea that like okay, like the people, like the Masons, like just thinking about my location, like London, Ontario, Canada, like like I said, there's a fair bit of like sort of Mason temples here. And like London itself is a very interesting city. But the thing that interested me was the idea that like the Masons who like built that location, uh, surely they like built that location ahead of time, like with a knowing about the grid lines, like even way back in the day, so to speak, like which is something that interested me because I would think that if a Mason in my area understood like what grid lines were and stuff they would have understood and have been able to predict that something like paradigm shift would have emerged where they were and uh it's always interesting because like i was sort of i've had buddies who have been like um i have a couple buddies who are freemasons and and and, and had been like contacted by freemasons in really synchronistic ways and i was always just sort of like wondering like you know when are the freemasons going to contact me but they never have and i don't even know if they ever will sort of thing like maybe they maybe they do know about me but they're just sort of like letting me do my own thing but i mean like obviously like freemasons like aren't like you know like people think masons they think like illuminati they think bad guys but i mean you know that's a pretty big conversation there in itself but i mean the masons like aren't the bad guys so to speak like i think in a lot of cases like the masons are like you know people who want to be able to help community grow in a lot of ways and some of them some of them depending on you know how deep it gets like do have like knowledge and understanding about like the higher dimensional realities and the different like laws of the universe so to speak but uh yeah, yeah no, that's that, an interesting that is that is a really good theory about it at the moment. I've always believed that the Freemasons don't spend the time sitting there planning how to destroy the world. I yeah. literally think they sit there meditating. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, no. I really do think they just sit there meditating. And although they might do it for the wrong reasons, they still do that. And yeah. they are tuning into higher things. So it's like, I mean, I've got a couple of friends myself. Um, well, I'm related to, I've got fathers in the Illuminati and stuff, well, in the Freemasons around England. And to be honest, it's, it's not as bad as you think. It is just normal no. people doing a normal thing. <laughs> yeah, it's more like, of a it's more of a friendship group. Yeah, like, literally. Totally. I mean, obviously, there's different layers to it, you know, different degrees and stuff. But I mean, yeah, oh, like on the surface, it's just a bunch of guys like playing backgammon. But I mean, backgam- backgammon in itself is a very symbolic game. Like, it's all about, like, the duality and stuff, which is interesting. Cool. But yeah, Aaron, um, I would like, uh, we got a couple other callers uh, and 15 minutes left in the show. So, I mean, if you don't mind, uh, let's continue some of this conversation in the after party as well. So, uh, is that cool? Like, can we just sort of, like, jump on to the next person? We got a little. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Yeah. I'm with it. All right, Russ. Okay. Sweet, man. Right. And post your uh, post your Facebook into the live chat if uh, if you want to do that if people want to get connected with you and uh, for anybody else in the live chat post your Facebook links as well. Like I mean, there's still 15 minutes left in the show, but uh, post your Facebook links and uh, get connected with each other while you're listening to the show here. So cool. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Talk to you later, man. Bye bye. Bye bye. Cool. All right. So uh, I do got a couple. Um, I do got a couple other people uh, in the queue, and uh, I just don't want to, like, jump the line. And there has been a person who's been, like, waiting on the queue for a while. And uh, this wasn't the person who I was intending to bring on next, but I'm going to bring them on just to be polite and be, uh, you know, appropriate to the fact that they've been waiting for a while. So uh, call it area code 704. We're going to bring you on to the air. And uh, let's try not to um, go for too long because it'd be awesome if i can just get like one more caller into the air while we're still doing this so but anyways we'll uh, get what we need to get in so call it from area code 704 get ready we're going to bring you onto the air so here we go hello, hello. hello caller hey is this, is this matt 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right away on you. <laughs> What's up, Matt? It's going good. It's going well. When I when I, I was like when I heard you say, "Why don't I make this quick?" I was like, "Dang it!" Can we make so, this quick? I know you like to. Uh, <laughs> what what, yeah. what are you saying, man? What, what would you like to? What do you have in mind? What do you want to say? I had a lot of things in mind actually, but I um, great. This is not like last time. It's not going to be like last time. Okay. Breathe, okay. breathe, man. Don't uh, don't go too fast. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't laugh at me. I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm laughing uh, at you. I know. I'm just kidding with you. Go ahead. Crap. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna save this for the hangout. I have nothing. Okay. Good again. Yeah. You want to save it for the hangout? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, I, I got nothing right now. I'm in an awkward <laughs> moment again. <laughs> it's all right, dude. Well, I'll bring you on earlier next time, and we can get like a real on-air discussion. But man, I appreciate you calling in anyway. So. You're always a part of the party, so. Yeah. You still here, we're here, man. Oh, we're still here. Like even just like a small, like little revelation or something. Really, really, like really, really. So just you, you, you do want me to say that really quick? Yeah, I mean, while we're here. Uh. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. I just want to explain something really quick, really quick, really quick, finally. At the beginning when you guys were talking about the walk-in thing and all that, I actually love that idea because really currently I really wanted to explain something about the whole entire, what it feels like to be in that state of oneness and whatnot. And I can say that I... That when you were asking um, if anyone has any memories of what that's of, the, of that state of before being born, I am actually one of those people that have had memories. Oh, here we go. Of of the death of my past life and then me transition. Hold, on, I need to go. To... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know. I don't want to make this. Long. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, I need to walk downstairs because I don't want to wake up my family. Um, anyway. No problem. <laughs> um, okay, here's the thing. The thing is, is that oh, I found my book down. Okay, here's the thing. Um, I, I I remember me dying and the state of me dying. I was in someone's arm. I'm not gonna go into this. I'm gonna say this for the hangout. But I was staring off to the sun. I saw everything going all white, and it came to that point where I felt in a moment of. You know it's happening. You know you're leaving. You know you, you just have this sudden realization that it was all just a game. And every time I remember that, I feel like crying because I realize that when you get to that state, you finally get back and you realize you lose your ego. You lose it all. You realize you're leaving. And you realize that person you were, that identification, that life is just gone. You realize all oh, that was just imaginary. And you realize there's much more ecstasy to be experienced uh, in a higher, more deeper form. And it's that overflowing uh, real revelation showing that you can't uh, experience it with the same ego that you have right now on this physical plane because yeah. it associates uh, with that whole entire outer connection with the world. It, uh, you, you, that ecstasy associates with the you that is everything. You can't associate that higher ecstasy with your ego. So you realize when you die, you're gone. Who you are, who you, you identify yourself as, is gone. And all you have is the understanding. And you realize it's a sweet moment, a very loving, intimate, and sweet moment. You, you, you feel as though you can feel it with everyone, even though you, before you thought everyone didn't know what you're feeling and they just thought you were mm-hmm. dying. But you know that on a higher level, you're feeling another part of them that knows this is happening. And you're feeling this deep, profound ecstasy and intimacy and you're gone. And you, you, you're just moving out. You're, and you shoot off and, and automatically come to this state of complete what you call bliss. And it's mm-hmm. that total and complete just gone. Yeah. Like no I more, mean, no more. I, Matthew, I'm here. There is no more Matthew. And there is no more here. There's just you. And there's just you. And, and there's this. 
Yeah. And there's this feeling, and then there's just not really caring for the details of you being this um, universal conscious. You don't care for the details. You don't care about the details anymore. You just care about the feeling, about you just being there. And you're just gone. And then all of a sudden, you move on to the next part. And mm. then you, you, you move on to the next part, and you don't know, then you know what the next part is. And it's like, it's like when you're dancing down, you're, you, you, I, I remember myself when I was dancing down, I was in that bliss, and I felt like that bliss took eternity. But really, there was no time I died. And then a, and a few moments later, I was, I was like, okay, where's the next person? Let me choose. Come on. Where's the next guy? Okay. You know, I didn't, I didn't like have to wait an eternity. I was like, okay, next one on the list, uh, Matthew, I want to choose him. Uh, it's like that. It's like that. And then I, I feel myself dancing down, and then all of a sudden I see this big light room with these people around me. And they're saying, good, good, it's working. Your ego is now dancing down to the point where you can conceptualize all of this, all of this as a room. And you can imagine us as separate beings. Good, you're, you're coming down to that densifying state, although you already know that. And I remember myself telling, telling them in a stage, like, wait, in an old man kind of way, like, well, of course. I mean, what do you think? That's how it, that's that's how it goes, you know. I guess the ego I was choosing, that ego was that of a sage. Because I have explained to you guys that I think of myself as some sage, and I realize why I hmm. chose this life. And, I and you're 14, circum- by the way, right? Yes. yes yeah, I no. Have. I just want to put some context in that because I'm sure the people listening to this, like, just you know, like, I just go ahead, go ahead, continue though. My birthday came. Sorry. Um. Anyway. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, yeah, and it's like, I believe, like, for instance, my name, you're talking about how the names really represent something? Well, Matthew, I realized, was the name of one of the, I'm not, I'm not getting religious here, I'm not, all reli- I'm not saying I'm a religious figure, I'm saying my name represents one. One of the disciples of Jesus was Matthew, and they say that there's mm-hmm. symbols for each disciple of Jesus for each disciple of Jesus. And Matthew had the symbol of a Benjamin Franklin. A Benjamin Franklin represented man. So Matthew was supposed to represent the disciple of man. And that's so represented me. I have a fascination with man, with humans. And then the sage like thing. I've always felt like I had a connection with the sage like figure. With an owl type of person. Yeah. And ironically I've felt myself with an owl. And then I felt myself with a staff. I always felt like I had a Connection with the staff and all these other crazy things. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's, I remember, I remember me condensing down to that ego when I was in that sea of bliss. The only problem mm-hmm. is, is that when I think about that, I start crying and then that immense pain comes on, knowing that I can actually remember that. I yeah, remember me true. losing that ego and then. I just start crying because you don't know how painful that can be to remember all that going away and knowing that I did turn into another person, which is me right now, but knowing that who I was before, too, was gone. And it's just so amazing to realize that that hopelessness of me being a little baby child, I remember me saying, no, please don't. I want to stay. No, no. And then I'm gone. Yeah. It's just, like, you know it's inevitable, but you want to say you want to stay. You're having so much fun. It's like a game. You don't ever want to end with your friends, but your parents are saying we have to go. It's all transient. Yeah. Everything, everything in this existence comes into existence and falls out of existence, or it transforms into something else, rather. So, yeah. yeah. And then, Matt, and then, I was just going to say, can we save some of this for the Hangout? Because I'd like to just bring on that other caller before... Uh, yes, yes, is that Okay. Just, I don't I'm want so to stop sorry for going no, on. No, no, nothing to be sorry about. Like that was awesome, man. Like you, what you said there, like that was some key stuff. And uh, yeah, like people are just like blown away by it in the live chat. I'm telling you, man. So and that I'm was a 14 awesome. year old. I am a 14 year old. Yeah, and it's just, just a number. <laughs> I'm like, just kidding with you. I'm just being funny. I'm sorry. I'm sick though, man. Cool. All right. Okay. So Matt, I'm gonna let you go just so we can bring on the next caller. But I, I really appreciate it, man. And and I'm actually like really proud of you. Like that was really awesome. So. Oh, you're proud of me. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay, you bring on the next caller. I'm gonna cry now. Cool. Okay. I'll talk to you later, Matt. Thanks a lot. Okay. Talk to you later. Cheers.
Bye. Okay, cool. So that was Matt, and uh, yeah, Matt's an awesome guy. Like I talked to him here and there, and uh, he'll be in the hangout as well if you want to like talk to him more. And yeah, like he's 14, but age is just a number. So okay. Um, with that said, I'm gonna bring on that person who I was talking about bringing on uh, afterwards. And the hangout, the Google Party hangout, I'll post a link for that in the live chat. But go to facebook.com/paradigmshiftradio, and you'll see it posted there at the top. So it'll be totally visible to you, and you'll see it, and it shouldn't be a problem. So only three and a half minutes left in the show. And, uh, yeah, we're going to bring on Shane. So, Shane, if you're ready, here we go. Hello, Shane. Hello. Are you with us? Hey, dude. Hello. How's Hi. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, you're from uh, – it was funny because we had Aaron on, who is from Birmingham, and uh, you're from Liverpool. So got yeah. some, like, bonus accents. But, uh, yeah, okay, three minutes left in the show. What would you like to bring to the show, Shane? Uh, the first thing is, I was just going to say, I was uh, I'm at home alone, I was feeling really lonely, but I feel absolutely ecstatic and fantastic now that uh, I've listened to the show and I interacted with everyone in here, so a big thank you to you all for that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great, man. Like, uh, yeah, no, we were, we were talking about that before, you were just saying that, you know, like, oh, you know, I feel kind of lonely, but I'm just like, man, you know, global internet community, go, 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 and here we are having a great time, so sweet, man, yeah. sweet. And uh, Probably okay. this after party as well. <laughs> yeah, the after party is going to be pretty rad too. And uh, Shane, I'm actually going to feature your YouTube channel into the episode on YouTube as well because I know you put up some videos there and and you got some pretty cool stuff up of you like talking and singing and stuff. So uh, for anybody who's listening to this, uh, Shane, post your uh, YouTube in the after party. But again, okay, so two minutes left in the show. What's some like parent shifty stuff that uh, you just want to share with the audience while we're here? Uh, okay, right, really quick thing. When I had my Reiki 1 attunement, we were sitting there and I had my eyes closed. And in my head, I could see the toroidal field surrounding the other two people that I was doing it with. And that was like, that's like the most sort of um, spiritual experience I've ever really had. But it was wicked to see it all, you know, the way, the way obviously it, it, it looks. <laughs> Did you have your eyes open or closed? No, they were closed. I was looking through my third eye and it was just, it was fantastic, it was. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, like I, that's a, an interesting thing that you can practice. People it's like try doing that. Try like closing your eyes and seeing with your third eye, like you know, literally like seeing the energy because like the third eye has a lens in itself and it actually like picks up the subtle energies, which you know are like the autorial and auroric field. So yeah, no, that's cool, man. I'm that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And Another thing you can tr- have a go at as well is if you've got any crystals. If you put them up to your third eye and just concentrate on listening to it because it's a living thing and ask mm-hmm. it where it comes from, it'll tell you where it came from. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, communicating with crystals. We've talked about that before. Like, crystals can talk to you if you know how to listen to them. Like, they're condensed light. Condensed light. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, 60 uh, seconds. Anything else? <laughs> a little um, I love you all so much. Just uh, <laughs> send that one out there. Cool, cool. All right, man. Okay, that's awesome. And uh, p- what's your YouTube? Like, what's the address for it? Do you know? Um, uh, no, I haven't got a clue. I've, I've yeah. somebody a nice tiny URL before, then, so I'll put that back up again. Yeah, yeah, and we'll make sure it's in the show notes. So, uh, yeah, and uh, maybe we'll we'll, we'll, uh, we'll definitely have you on in a future episode, and maybe you can sing a song for us, because you're actually on, like, Britain's Got Talent, right? A few years ago? Uh, I, I auditioned for it. I'm not on it Yeah, yet. well, that's what I meant. So. <laughs> cool, man. All right, so with that said, we're going to wrap up this episode. And for everybody listening, thank you once again. ParadigmShiftCentral.com, Facebook.com, slash ParadigmShiftRadio. Check out the donate feature and also join me on Facebook if you want, Facebook.com, slash SkullBabylon. And check out my YouTube as well, YouTube.com, slash SkullBabylon. And again, the link for the Hangout will be posted on Facebook.com, slash ParadigmShiftRadio. So for everybody who's in tune in, once again, thank you as always. And we We'll see you in future. So thanks again, Shane. And uh, we're just going to play the outro music and uh, wrap it up. So cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Namaste. Namaste.